take care of for three.
please rise to receive the family. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. It is kept for you in heaven who are shielded through faith by the coming of God's power that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you suffer in grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth, refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Do not let your hearts be troubled. believe in God believe also in me and my father's house are many rooms if it were not so I would have told you I am going to prepare a place for you if I go and prepare a place for you I will come back and take you to be with me that you also know where I am you know the place where I am going Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered and said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though we walk through the valley, the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For God is with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I declare to you brothers and sisters that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep but we will all be changed in the flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must put on imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. The saying that is written will be true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. 
O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my brothers, therefore, my sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Do you not know? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he will not grow weary? In God's understanding, no one can fathom. God gives strength to the weary. To those who have no might, he increases the power of the weak. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. Come on, y'all, a little quiet in here. I know, I know, I know. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. Oh, come on, come on, y'all, a little quiet. I know our hearts. I know, I know, I know. This is the day that the Lord has made. Even before she was in her mother's womb, God knew family. This is the day. And so we shall rejoice 
and be glad in it because the Bible tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we are here today not because Miss Kitty died, but we are here, family, today because she lived. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And by your presence here today, by your presence here on a Friday morning in downtown Fredericksburg, not being able to find a parking space, each and every one of us on this day can celebrate because she lived. And so come on, somebody give God a hand of praise this morning. Amen, 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 amen. I am just truly excited to be here this morning. My heart, family, with you this morning is heavy. But when I thought about it this, this, way, this week, Betty, and I call her Betty Boo, um, when I thought about it this week about and how Miss Kitty, in the midst of her difficult days, she still made her way to the house of prayer. And some of us in our good days can't even make it to the house of prayer. And so on today, we are celebrating with you, family, because even in the midst of her bad days, Miss Kitty still gave God a praise, amen? And so on this day, we are here today to celebrate God because that's what Miss Kitty would want us to do. So we know tears are flowing. We know hearts are heavy, but this is a celebration. This is not a funeral. Come on, this is a celebration, a celebration because we know where Miss Kitty is on this day, amen? Amen, amen. And so we're going to follow the order of service today. We're going to move forward with Sister Trinity and Brother Don as they will give, bring a hymn of consolation. Then we're going to move forward with scripture readings by Minister Bernadine Parrish with the Old and New Testament by our prayer of comfort by Reverend Pat Wormley from Mount Zion Baptist Church. And then another hymn of assurance. Amen. Because y'all don't want to hear me all morning. So we're going to follow this order of service. Come on. Come on. Amen. 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 We are so grateful to have all of you to come and celebrate the life of my Aunt Kitty. Uh, she was a phenomenal woman. And the song that we are about to sing is talking about God's faithfulness. Come on now. How many of you know that God is faithful? Has he been faithful to you? One of the lines in this song says, you always made a way out of no way. Has God made a way out of no way for anybody in here? If he is, if he has, let's give him a praise today. A Shabbat, a loud praise for God. He's worthy. He's worthy. Me alone, but you forgave me, 
and you kept on blessing me. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have a hope. It is because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Because thy compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've been, has he been? Lord, you've been so faithful. Has he been faithful to you? Yes, Come on, raise has. it up for him then. You've been, oh Lord, Lord, Lord you've been, been so faithful. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You pin my joy in a time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You pin my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of song. Strength when I'm weak and worn. You've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. Come on, put your hands together and let's give him a praise. Yes, Lord. You've been, oh, Lord, Lord, you've been so faithful. Can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. Can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. Oh, yes, oh, Lord, you've been, you've been, Lord, you've been so faithful, you've been, yeah, you've been, Lord, you've been so faithful, yes, you have. Let me hear y'all say I can't hear you. Lord, you've been so faithful. If you believe it, say it loud. Come on, you, hear me hear you. Oh, oh, oh. You've been. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Lord you've, you've been, been so faithful. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You've been. Lord, you've been so faithful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. Yes, you have, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We give you glory. You've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. Glory. Hallelujah. God be the glory. 
That sound real good this morning. Funeral or no funeral. God is good. All the time. Yes, he is. To God be the glory. Praise God. Praise God. We give God all the praise and honor this morning for his faithfulness. He fell if not. He fell if not. I'm keep trying to get this little watch my call working. <laughs> but it's all right. It's going to be okay. Yes, it will. In the morning. Don't you just love it? We serve a right now, God. All you have to do is just wait on the Lord. And he will make all things right. To the family. Church friends. And especially Brother Watson. The children. Grandchildren. Great-grandchildren. Friends. We just want to let you know. Everything is going to be all right. Yeah. We continue to pray that God will comfort you and strengthen you because he is the only one that we can look to. We give him all praise and honor each and every day because he fell if not. And our scripture this morning reading Proverbs 31, 28 through 31. How fitting. It says, her children stand and bless her. Her husband praise her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. It says, charm is deceptive, mm -hmm. and beauty does not last. Yeah. But a woman who fears the Lord right. will be greatly praised. Yeah. Reward her for all she has done. Mm -hmm. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Yeah. Amen. 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 Bless God. Bless God. That was Proverbs 31, 28 through 31, and that's the New Living Translation. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 3 and 14 also. Okay. It says, if the work survives, if the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. How many believe that? All right. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Pray that the words will comfort you in your hour of need Amen. and that you will continue to look unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. O oh, gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity, for allowing us to come together this morning, family and friends, to celebrate the life of one Miss Kitty, a close family friend. Lord, we thank you for allowing us the opportunity to have known her though these many years. Lord, we thank you for her life, Lord. We thank you for those that she has interacted with. Lord, we ask you now to bless this family. Lord, we know hearts are heavy now. But Lord, let them know that you are above everything. Lord, comfort them and let them know that tears are all right. Lord, just put your strong arms of protection around them. 
Continue to lead them and guide them. Lord, bless us that are left here on this earth. We ask that those, Lord, that do not know you in the pardon of their sins, that they will get to know you. So that when our day shall come, we can say, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity. Continue to lead, guide, and direct. We ask you now to bless the shepherd of this house. Give him a word, Lord, that will strengthen our hearts today. Continue to bless this sanctuary and all those that shall enter and go out. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. And as you do these things for us, Lord, we will be ever so careful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We ask it all and give thanks. Our very soul says, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To the family, bless all of you. Amen. Bless all of you. Last Sunday, Miss Betty Banks gave me a call and asked that I would sing today. And it's nothing but an honor. Prior to that, Miss Kitty, twice on two separate occasions, said to me, on this day, I'd like you to sing at my service. And I never in my entire life had anyone ask me to do that while they were living. And I said, my God, my God, my God, of all the people she could have asked to sing, Lord, why me? But thank you, Miss Kitty. My mom would always tell me I'm only going to be two more seconds. Every time Miss Kitty called my mother, she would say, how is my boy? She would always say, how is my boy? So I guess we kind of had like a unknown love relationship. So I'm going to sing this song the best I can. It's not easy, but the best I can. And I'm weary, but I must toil on till the Lord, the Lord, come to carry me, me away. Oh, yes, when the morning is bright and the lamb is the light and the night, the night, it is fair. As the day, oh yes, there will be peace in the valley for me someday. No sadness, yeah, yeah. no 
sorrow. Now I'm on trombone. Trombone, I see. There will be peace. Peace. Peace in the valley. Peace for me. There the bear will be gentle and the wolf will be tame and the lion the lion shall lay down by the lamb Oh, 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 yes, they tell me the host of the wild shall be led by a child, and I'll be changed, I'll be changed from this creature. That I am. Oh, yes. Oh, there will be peace in the valley for me someday. Thank you, church. Bless your family. Miss Kitty, I love you. I love you with all my heart. Bless you. Amen, amen. We want to thank Minister Parrish and of scripture, Reverend Wormley, for that prayer of comfort. Brother Wilson. All I could think about was Mr. Wilson. I call him Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, tear that song up. Y'all remember that piece? I ain't going no more with him. That's all I'm going to do. Y'all remember that? Amen, amen, amen. I wish I could take that up. Leave it alone, Pastor. I ain't going no further. And with his sister, Sister Gail, if you come on, come forward with the acknowledgments and the reading of the obituary silently, and then I, I'll come back up with the reflections because I got something to say to Brother Don. <laughs> the Lord hath made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Reverend Ritter has called out my father and my brother. <laughs> so I'll just start by saying I have the speaking voice. I don't think mine goes to music. <laughs> so. To the family, clergy, all assembled, it is my privilege to share with you just a few of the acknowledgments that have been sent to the family. Family, I would like to acknowledge that um, upon our arrival here, there were two other acknowledgments. I'm just going to read 
the church that they are from because they are not what you selected. Mount, <clears throat> excuse me, Mount Zion Baptist Church on Harrison Road has an acknowledgement that you can share in your time together. And Mount Olive Baptist Church in Stafford, Virginia has an acknowledgement which will be presented to you. And to represent the numerous cards that have been received, these two will be shared. Your mother lives on in you. She nurtured you when you were small and taught you as you grew. Her values, lessons, hopes, and dreams became a part of you. Though she is gone, her love for you remains and always will. Your mother lives within your heart. Her spirit guides you still, hoping the legacy of love your mother left you will be a source of strength and comfort for you now. With deepest sympathy, Allison Covington and family. Keeping you close in caring thoughts and prayers, Though your heart must hold deep sadness at the loss of the one you loved, may it also hold the blessings of the life you shared and the love that will always be a part of you. Praying that God will comfort your heart, uplift your spirit, and carry you through this time of sadness to a place of peace with deepest sympathy, the hospitality ministry, and it's directed to Sister Betty. The church correspondence as follows. From New Vision Ministries to the family of the late Mrs. Ethel B. Watson, cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. Psalm 55, 22. New Vision Ministries would like to express our heartfelt sympathy on the passing of Mrs. Ethel B. Watson the beloved grandmother of our spiritual daughters, Ms. Siobhan Berry and Ms. Aisha Washington. In his own way for his own purpose, God has reached down into this earthly garden to pick one of our most beloved servants. He called home the dearly cherished spirit of Mrs. Ethel B. Watson to be with him in eternity. Scripture reminds us that a crown of righteousness awaits those who have fought the good fight, kept the faith, and finished the course. To the family, we thank God for Mrs. Ethel's life and for what she deposited in each of your lives and how we too have benefited from those very seeds sown and watered. We rejoice in the shared knowledge that Mrs. Ethel trusted God's word, followed his guidance, and sought his leading in all that she said and did. We pray that God will surround you in his loving arms and that his peace will be your strength. Ms. Ethel showered everyone around her with love, brought joy and laughter, and gave this world and her surrounding community the lasting gifts of a beautiful life and blessed many memories forever. The New Vision Ministries family will continue to lift you, your family in prayer as you face the days ahead. We will be here for you. With greatest sympathy, Reverend Aaron Anderson, Senior Pastor, New Vision Ministries, Mount Hope Baptist Church, Harrison Road, Fredericksburg. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John eleven twenty five. To the beloved family of Sister Ethel B. Watson, loving mother of Paula Johnson, Betty Banks, Alan Washington, and Wayne Washington and family, on behalf of Pastor Raymond A. Bell, Jr., the officers and members of Mount Hope Baptist Church in Fredericksburg, Virginia, be assured that you have the love and prayers of those who care and know that God is our refuge and strength. He will help you through your sorrow, and may his mercy grant you peace to lighten each tomorrow. Remember the treasures of joyful memories of her life, love, and legacy that will help fill the empty places of her physical absence. In our humanity, we will cry, 
but be encouraged to know that this weeping endures only for a night season and that joy is promised to come in the morning. We rejoice in knowing that to be absent from the body only means to be present with the Lord. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be more, no more pain for the former things have passed away. Revelation 21.4 under the signature of Reverend Dr. Raymond Bell, Senior Pastor, Mount Hope. Family, words cannot express the profound sense of sorrow this branch of Zion, Shiloh New Site, shares with you today. The pastor, officers, and the members of Shiloh Baptist Church New Site pray your strength in the Lord, for it is He who is able to sustain you. God is your stronghold, and with Him as your guide, we know your faith will see you through. This body of believers loved Sister Ethel Brown Watson too, our beloved Miss Kitty. She was a faithful and devoted member whose time of fellowship here was hindered only by illness. Her long-term membership spanning decades and marked by regular attendance, service in the music ministry, the former kitchen committee, and Sunday school. She had been and will continue to be missed from our time of fellowship together. Not just her presence was missed, but the kindness, caring spirit, sense of humor, and keen wit. <laughs> Praise be to God that we could be witness to her valiant efforts to be strong in the face of illness, to exhibit such strength while undergoing the trials and tribulations of this old world, yet and still having the perseverance to attend worship within these four walls. While we know there is sadness, may you be able to rejoice in knowing that Sister Kitty has won the battle and claimed the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know the love in your hearts will keep her ever present in your lives. And as God in his infinite wisdom has called her from the labors of this life to the rewards of heaven, we pray for peace within your spirits and joy in knowing there is no more pain and suffering. Though this can be a difficult time in the life of any family, we are those who place our trust in God who can heal our sorrows. Therefore, Brother Watson, the children, grandchildren, siblings, we commend you and your loved ones to the strength and serenity of God whose peace passes all understanding under the signature of Reverend Kenan Thomas, Senior Pastor, Shallow New Site. Thank you for your attention. There will be additional acknowledgments from the family. No, the um, obituary is to be read silently. Thank you for your attention. man once said once used to say everybody that gets the program when you first walk into a funeral you already read the obituary <laughs> so no need to give you much time <laughs> so we will move forward with our reflections a wise woman told me two minutes Two minutes. <laughs> Just had to look behind me. The first name on the under reflections, cousins. Y'all cousins say Don Brown. Two minutes, Don Brown. 
then Jocelyn and William Banks, Sheila Porter, and Trey Lamar. Family, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart to give me this opportunity um, to come and to be the presiding officer of this uh, occasion and to, as we continue to uh, keep each and every one of you all lifted up in my prayers, I am here with and for you all. Betty Boop, you know I'm here. So call on me at any time. After the reflections, I am going to turn this order of service over to the pastor as he brings the eulogy. Hear ye him prayerfully. Amen. God bless you. <coughs> Two minutes. <laughs> It's like giving socks to Mike. <laughs> no, no, for real. Uh, oh, for real, though. For real, though. <laughs> no, uh, first, first of all, they say that your, your, your cousins are your first best friends. Come on in. That's right. And, uh, man, I used to love it when Alan and Paula used to, and Betty used to come to town. Betty was a little young, but when Alan and Paula used to come to town. You know, he could push that red wagon faster than anybody. <laughs> he pushed me so fast that when I go around the corner, I'd fall over and bust my big head. <coughs> but it was fun. We loved, we loved each other. And when, he let, when they let us go down to the Ponderosa, <laughs> Uncle Leroy's spot. Yeah, man, I tell you, you're talking about some fun we used to have. But I'm really here today to read a letter from Aunt Kitty. Believe it or not, two, three, four months before she passed, mm -hmm. she could sort of feel herself waning, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And she called me to her house to dictate a letter that she wanted to be read mm -hmm. to her family today. Mm -hmm. yes. To my lovely family, mm -hmm. the matriarch of the family, Lucy, in case y'all don't know, that's my mother, Cleo. <laughs> and the rest, all the rest, loving family, I'm saying goodbye to you. Until we meet in our Heavenly Father's home someday. What a great time I'm looking forward to. To the men in the family, look after the women. Be strong. To the women, be the good women that you are. Mm -hmm. Stay the good women. Mm -hmm. To Betty, mm -hmm. you are the best caretaker in the state of Virginia. <laughs> Outside of Jackie Lewis. <laughs> Looking after the matriarch. Mm -hmm. Except for her. Because she's great too, but I'm getting tired, mm -hmm. as usual, getting sleepy, mm -hmm. as usual. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about taking a nap. Mm -hmm. To God be the glory. Mm -hmm. To all of you, I love you. I'm kidding. How's everybody doing today? Good morning. Uh, so I'm Brandon, this is Brianna, and we want to share an experience our grandma created with us each morning mm -hmm. before school. So picture this, a car ride to school was like a spiritual wheel on journey. <laughs> Journey on wheels, excuse me. Guided by none other than our grandmother, Kitty. She had this ingenious strategy to make sure we started off the day on the right foot, meaning buttermilk pancakes. 
Anywho, you guessed it. On the way to school, we recited the Lord's Prayer every morning like a well-oiled prayer machine. And let me tell you, with each and every Our Father, hallowed be thy, you could definitely feel that protective shield protecting us throughout the school year, school days. Amen. We're just protected. Amen. Grandma knew what she was doing. Yeah, drop-offs weren't just drop-offs. They were epic journeys of peace, love, and protection. Join us in honoring our grandmother. And uh, for those that need a refresher, we have you right up at the top. So, our, our Father, Father which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, forgive us our trespasses. As we, we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sheila Porter. Aunt Kitty is my aunt. And I am going to share some reflections with you from three of her sisters. Mm. Saying goodbye to Kitty. I did not know how hard it would be to say goodbye. Yet it was harder still when I refused to say it. There comes a time when we all need to say goodbye to one that we love and the one we lose. If we are ever going to close the door of our past and walk confident, confidently in the future. If we do not have the opportunity to truly say goodbye, we are, depriving, are deprived of what counselors called closure which means exactly what it says. In this case, it is a conclusion to our former life with our loved one, Kitty. Until we have closure, we will never be able to move on in our lives. There will always be a part of us that's back there in the past. We hold to a thread of hope that we will wake up one morning and Kitty will be there waiting for us. It's terribly painful. Yet, many believe that saying goodbye would be even more painful. And in a way it is. The difference is that while our goodbye is dreadfully painful, it allows us to move past our pain and into healing. If you have not yet said goodbye to Kitty, today would be a fine day to do so. <clears throat> Write a letter to Kitty. Tell her everything, not just the good. Tell her that you are angry, that you are lonely, that you wish she had remained alive long enough to witness this or that in your life. Pour your regrets into your letter. If possible, take it to the cemetery and read it at a gravesite. If not, plan some other way of closure, another closure event. Read it aloud. Seal it in an envelope and store it away. Pray that God will enable you to fully accept his will for Aunt Kitty and for your life in the future as you go through this loss. Once you have done this, turn your face towards the future and expectation. Closure allows healing to begin. May the grace of God be with you through your closure and healing process. 
Sister Rebecca. <laughs> Dear Kitty, I'm gonna miss you, girl. I have so many memories, some good, some bad, mostly good. Kitty, I appreciate all the things you did for me and my children when they were young. I could always count on you. Not only my children, you were extremely good to me. I remember having four or five suits in my closet for church. You gave me every one of them. There were times when I needed to make a decision about something, but wouldn't do it until I talked with you. That is how much I valued your opinion and your love. Kitty, I could go on and on, but I won't. This is so hard to do. So sleep on, Kitty. Take your vest until we meet again. Loving and missing you sorrowfully, sister, AKA Beverly. To the memory and honor of my dear sister Kitty, or Ethel, or Taskmaster, Taskmaster. <laughs> I will miss you very much. We were the first two of a large family of nine. We went through a lot as we tried to keep our family together. I know I will see you again in heaven with all my love, your big sis, Lucy, AKA Cleo. <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Um, I want first want to thank for first giving honor to God and thank you for the family for allowing me to be a part of this uh, momentous ceremony. I know um, it's a big thing and I don't take it lightly. Um, I was asked by the family to recite a poem that I wrote for my own mother one year that I didn't have enough money to give her anything for her birthday. <laughs> um, but I hope it really does reflect well on the legacy of Miss Kitty. Um, this poem is called Dear Mom. Mm. Dear Mom, thank you for continuous trying, for believing in me all the time you knew I was lying, for rubbing my back and hugging me when I was crying. You knew I would be okay and the Lord would somehow make a way for my eyes to see the shine of a brighter day. And when you did not know what to say, your sentence began with, let us pray. Lord, keep my children from hurt, harm, and fear. And when you speak, oh Lord, let them hear. Keep your hands upon their heart, and may you never, ever, ever, ever be apart. In your precious name, we pray, a man. A men and women, you push up hills today. We would have it no other way but for you. What would we do? Your love so true and unconditional. Somewhere in between hard truths and traditional. I love you sometimes sounding like it's 930 and you need to go to bed. It's the last time it's going to be said, so match that pillow with that head now. <laughs> so I was laid down in love. I love you sometimes sounding like... <sighs> There's dishes in the sink. I'm gonna close my eyes and blink cause I'm literally on the brink of slapping you. Oops, I mean love tapping you and put your jeans inside the machine. Your whole entire room needs to be clean so we were washed in love. So mom, I thank you for doing, for believing in all the dreams that I was pursuing, for encouragement and prayer. You were always there for me. And I thank heaven up above for sending that type of love to me and I'll call her my me. Thank you. If Ethel Watson blessed your life, if Ethel Watson ever gave you a word of encouragement, if Miss Ethel Watson ever let the love, light, and life of God shine through her to bless your very life, will you help me thank God in heaven where she is for her life today? Will you help me encourage this family? Come on, only if you know God lived through her. Only if you know that she know her Redeemer lives. Help me encourage these family members. Help me encourage each other. She's not sleep. She's with God. 
where every day is Sunday. The Sabbath has no end. To all of the members of the beautiful Brown family, it is an honor to eulogize one of your beloved family members. Uh, to all family members in the body of faith gathered here, in person and online, God bless you. Uh, will you help me thank God for this presider, Reverend Ritter Armstead, God bless you. All clergy who are on the program, help me thank God for them. This entire music ministry, all of those who sung. And, uh, and a new company I didn't know existed until today, Wilson and Wilson Incorporated. I don't know who's the CEO. I'll let them figure that out. To all members of Shiloh Baptist Church New Site, thank God for you for all of your loving expressions to this family, to the media team, to the music team, to the culinary team, to the security team, hospitality team. Will you help me thank God for the service of Shiloh New Site? God bless all of you to the ushers. God bless you. And it is, it is a joy to celebrate a life well lived. Now, Mr. William, this, this is the first time I've met you. But allow me to say, sir, that if I ever look like you when I get up there, Doc, I'll be doing something right. Will you help me thank God for this good-looking man, Doc? You can do better than that. Help me thank God for Mr. William Watson. I said you can do better than that. Yeah. Looking like Denzel's dad. I uh, couldn't figure it out, so I had to ask the family. Uh, when I first became pastor here, I did something called meet and greets, and you learn a great deal of names, and somebody asked me, did I know Miss Kitty? And I said, no, I've looked up and down the church roster. I don't think a Kitty was on there only to find out they were talking about Miss Ethel Watson. And of course, I had to ask, uh, how do you get Kitty out of Ethel? Did she love cats when she was young? There's, there's a plethora of options that were running through my mind. There was no definitive answer, which is fine, which is fine, but, but it all made sense shortly thereafter because the way you get Kitty out of Ethel is the same way God gets daughter out of Ethel. Amen. Some of us called her Ethel. Some of us called her Kitty. Some of us called her mom, sister, grandma. But God calls her daughter. Yeah, yeah. There's a scripture in Psalm 90. It reminds me of our beloved sister this morning, God's daughter. It simply says, and we finish our years with a sigh. Some translations say we finish our years out with a groan. Finish our years, some translations, with a moan. Some of us wonder why this awesome woman we depended on for so long was so dependable it's because she was also a dependent. For when you know where your help comes from, when you know who God is, God's unusual strength at work in your life can make hard assignments look easy at times. And we are those who confess and profess. It's, it's, not, it's not me. As Galatians chapter 2 put it, it's Christ who lives in me. Philippians 4 puts it this way, I can do, do all things. I can, I can endure hardship. I can raise children under tough circumstances. I can, I can be the first Uber driving my grandkids around. And, and even when I can't drive around, my strength flows to William and, and he drives us around. It's, 
It's just a circulation of strength. And it's good to know a pillar like that. It's good to know somebody who has so much strength on the inside, they can give you some. Talk to me if you can. Somebody in here is the recipient of some mother, some sister, some grandmother's overflow of strength. That's why you're in here right now. The scripture says we, we finish our years with a sigh. That's how I first met Miss Kitty. I never saw her in the fullness and the vitality of her life by the time I saw her. Um, sickness and, and illness had started to get the best of her physical self, but not her spiritual self. When I went to see her in Richmond, I walk into the hospital room and, and she's groaning. She's literally in the hospital bed groaning. The nurse says, uh, there's somebody here to see you. They were just about to take her to the other wing. And, and she wakes up and Paula, she had church with the nurse <laughs> in the hospital room all the way down the hallway, all the way on the elevator, off the elevator, down the rest of the hall. They were literally, her and the nurse, I, I just stood back, I was admiring all of it. That somebody who, who was just groaning two minutes ago would now be exchanging mantras with the nurse like, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Can I encourage you this morning? If you're not on a hospital bed and somebody who was on a hospital bed was still able to recognize the goodness of God in the land of the living, you know, I could sit down right there. I mean, that, that, that's enough for somebody to take home. In other words, it's not as bad as it seems. And there's always a reason to thank God. There's always a reason to glorify God in all things. But she gets back to her hospital room on the other side of the wing. I'm there and she returned to groaning. She returned to, to a type of sighing. It wasn't words. It was noise. You could tell that even as Romans chapter 8 put it, not just creation, but, but, but we groan and moan and sigh. Praise be to God for the Holy Spirit who makes interpretation of that. And so Reverend Thomas might not have known what she was saying, but the sweet God that we love, serve, and worship knew exactly what she was saying. Now, she was, she, she was alive enough. She had one more task for me, Alan. She had one more, see, see, one more task. She said, now, Reverend, go get me a blanket. And I went around the corner, got the blanket from the man. It was so warm, I almost asked for two. Let me get one of these at home. Put the blanket over her, and literally in a matter of 30 seconds, she was back to a type of deep sigh. That's how her life ended. But the crux of the text is, and the crux of the sermon is, it's not how her life always was. And you ought to thank God that while we end our life in size, we can begin our life with smiles. One of the great questions of the text, something that baffles many uh, black men who take no interest in the Christian religion, is how come Jesus is never depicted as laughing? How come there's no story in Matthew or Mark or Luke or John or the Gospel of Thomas if you're Catholic? that depicts Jesus Christ as smiling or laughing. Can I suggest to somebody that even though it's not there in the text, there's something in between the very verses you read and don't ever put him so much in his divinity that you don't understand his humanity, Jesus laughed. Now, some of you need a verse for that, so you'll never believe what I'm saying, but I'm talking about to somebody who knows him. 
That's why grandma said, he walks with me and, and he talks with me and every conversation ain't a condemnation conversation because I'm in him. There is no converse, condemnation. There's some laughter that goes on. There's some smiling that goes on when you know Jesus, when you live with him day in and day out. You ought to thank God that not all of our days end and are full of groans and moans and sighs. We all smile at various points of life. The first time all of her children were together, she smiled. The first time she held her grandchild, both of them. She smiled. First time she, first time she sang in the choir and understood that God has given her a praise within her voice that both Rita and I do not have. You said it, so I'm just repeating what you already said to William. I, when she realized that she can make music with her voice unto the Lord, I, I, I think she smiled. I think she smiled when she celebrated milestone after milestone and after milestone after milestone. And in all the photos you've been showing and all the photos that you have, something tells me, even though I wasn't there, she was smiling. Yeah, she, she smiled. I, I, I asked, uh, I asked and, and I'm on strict orders. I'm on, I'm on strict orders from Captain Lucy. I, I, for Miss Cleo, she gave me strict orders to tell everybody to hold it down till she gets back. I'm telling what she told me. But I asked her, I said, I said, give me, give me one word to describe your sister. And, and she took her, she took her Lucy matriarch paws and, 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 and told a joke and then, and then told me she was just a people person. That's why I said you can feel the love, light, and life flowing through her o over to you on the worst of your days, over to you when you needed a word of encouragement, over to you to appreciate what life is all about. When you're a people person, you got to be a God person. That's right. That's right. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength is not how the commandment stops. You then pivot to loving your neighbor as yourself. You've got to love God in order to be a people person. And as a people person, sometimes it's the simple things in life. How many of you know she could find a bargain? How many know that shopping was a spiritual discipline for her? And when one sister finds a bargain, it, it doesn't just stop with the one sister. Oh, no, no, no. Like that's a cardinal sin not to tell the other sister that I know where the land of milk and honey on this side is. It's, it's down at Hex. I'm trying to tell you where, where it is. It's at Marshall's. It's at Macy's. It's at TJ Maxx. I know where God's blessings are because there's blessing and a bargain. And it hit me that every Christian knows something about that. Every Christian knows something about finding a good deal and, and finding a good price because you and I were bought with the price. And so you and I didn't come cheap. You and I didn't come at a discount. There's somebody who gave his life so you and I would have the right to the tree of life. We finish our years with the groan but we don't groan all of our years you ought to thank God there's some smiles in life and there's some there's some laughter in life but the reality of life is in these days we do have trouble and there are some tears in life I wouldn't be much of the Lord's preacher if I didn't remind all of us that there are some tears of sorrow in life came a point where I could tell in her groan that the pain wouldn't go away and that the doctor's appointments and the doctor's offices and that hospital bed started to come off as a form of torture. There comes a point where laughing subsides, smiling subsides, and, and the pain I experience causes me to shed tears. Jesus is fascinating because, of course, he's not depicted as having 
laughed, or smiled, but he is depicted as having cried. Somebody's favorite verse in here right now is Jesus wept. That's as far as you go. Everybody knows Jesus wept. And in his weeping, he teaches us something. He teaches us not to deny pain, not to deny hardship, not to deny uh, trouble we encounter from family, from loved ones, from friends, from work, from career, from the realities of life. But Christ teaches me not to yield to the pain and not to surrender to the pain and not to let the pain have more say so in my life than the promises of God. That's what she's a living testimony about that, that, that in this life you do have trouble, but be of good cheer because God sits high. But God still looks slower because God knows the very number of hairs on my head. Give God some time to work all things together. Give, give God to do more adding than subtracting and you'll find out how sweet God is. Because you can cry tears of sorrow in life. But those aren't the only kind of tears you cry. You can you can cry tears of joy in this thing called life. That's when you know God has worked it for your good. Something tells me that when she met Denzel's dad, there was a new smile on her face. She got a new pep in her step. A certain way you start walking and certain way you start talking. Teddy P said, when somebody loves you back. And I ain't talking about an 80-20. I ain't, I ain't talking about a 70-30. I ain't, you ain't even talking a 60-40. You talk about somebody you go 50-50 on that thing with. You puts a new level of joy in your life and, and, and tears of joy are a sign that you believe God's promises have more say so than the pain, than the hardship and the sorrow that you encounter in this thing called life. life. Life can be quite neutral, but God has a way of telling life, you're still on my terms. You, you, you're still on my terms, life. It's, it's not Satan causing the pain. Sometimes in life, it's just life. We say life be life in, but, but God has a way of putting life back on a leash and, and telling life, you know I created you. When I breathe the breath of life into life, I put some grace and mercy bylaws within life that allow life to have a type of say so, but it allows God to have the last say so. If you know I'm telling the truth, say amen. There are smiles. There are laughs, there are tears of sorrow, but there are also family tears of joy. Then we sigh, then we groan, then we moan. Ah, uh, I don't know too many people who like to go shopping after dialysis. Hawthorne, you know anybody? I mean, like most people need to go to sleep. Most people don't want to do anything after you've been not at one hour of dialysis, not at two hours of dialysis, but three, sometimes four hours of dialysis. But that didn't stop her, did it? I'm trying to tell you that when God puts something in your spirit called strength, called power, called might, even though you're groaning and even though you're sighing and even though you're moaning, you still have spurts and you still have flickers of the very vitality that God gave you. So as you all cared for your beloved mother and as you stopped by to see her and after you called on her and checked on her and wrote her letters and 
called her on the phone, there was more sighing because when God officially tells you that you're about to cross over to the other side, the, the side becomes a type of eternal exhale where even if nobody believes it and even if everybody keeps telling you hang on in there and keep fighting the good fight that's what Paul called it in 2nd Timothy keep fighting the good fight you know that your exhales are coming to an end and when you know your exhales are coming to an end you value your inhales all the more and what you do with your inhales is what the psalmist said in Psalm 150. Let everything that can still inhale, let everything that doesn't take it for granted that you can still inhale. Let everybody who still believes if I only got one inhale left, I'm a bless and not curse. I'm a encourage and not condemn. I'm a love and not hate. If you know that was Ethel Watson, come on and give God a praise because God calls her daughter. The scripture says it has not yet appeared what you and I shall be for when we see him, we will see him as he is. He'll call us daughter and he'll call us son in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're now in the hands of the funeral home.
Ben, 